Alright, welcome everyone. We're about to kick off. Um, we're going to be conducting today, for your very eyes, a uh, competition in golf, uh, a round of golf you might say, uh, that will also be formally verified. Uh, so we'll be writing smart contracts um, in whatever language you prefer, and uh, you'll submit, submit your contracts to our uh, CI server, which will run a suite of formal verification uh, proofs against that bytecode. And um, if you do manage to pass our specs, so you have a provably correct contract, um, then there is a competition for making the most gas efficient uh, such contract. Um, and in particular, we'll be doing it today with an ERC20 since um, this is the one with the most straightforward specification. Um, of course, um, there's some caveats on what the specification actually looks like, and we've made a little bit of an opinionated choice here, uh, but we'll go over that in due time. So, um, when I said that we'll be doing a competition, I actually meant we'll be doing two competitions um, at the same time. Uh, namely, there's this EVM golf competition that I just described, making the most uh, provably correct ERC20 implementation. But there's actually a second contest uh, going on behind the scenes, and if you're uh, feeling uh, like the first one might not be too much of a challenge for you, or if you're thinking that formal verification is uh, just uh, a sham, then uh, you can participate in the second competition, which asks you to um, submit bytecode that has some sort of bug in it, um, but it still passes the specs somehow. If you believe that the specs and the methods that we have created with the um, formal verification process that has been set up, then you can try to um, fool it. And you can try to submit bytecode that passes those specs, but are otherwise faulty in some way. I mean, it's hard to define when uh, there's no longer a spec to talk about, but I'm sure we'll be able to figure something out. So. Uh, you'll be able to compete in both of these competitions, and uh, we'll get to the details soon enough. Uh, first, I'm not going to be talking too much about uh, the theory behind what we're doing today, because um, we need to have time to actually do some hacking. Um, but let me just mention that um, the proving methods that we're using here for this workshop are going to be using the K-Framework. Um, and we'll be writing our specs and then looking at our specs um, uh, written in uh, the ACT um, smart contract specification language. We'll get into it. Okay, so let's get deeper into the specification. I'll come over to the other side of the table. So um, sometimes people say that and ERC20, um, the ERC20 specification, as, as if it is some sort of specification. Uh, it's really not. Um, it's more of an interface that really just tells you um, what the methods should look like um, in your contract. and doesn't actually say anything about the behavior, of course. I mean, we have some intuition around what this should be, but there's actually a whole range of different kinds of behavior um, of different ERC20 tokens, and it gets kind of annoying when you start dealing with them, and then you have to check whether uh, this particular ERC20 actually did return a boolean at the end of its uh, transfer function, or what's happening in the case where you're sending to the zero address and stuff like this. So, um, in order to actually have a specification, we need to make a choice on all these decisions. Um, and let me present our choices, but before I do that, um, I'm going to show you the language in which we're presenting these uh, choices. So this is our uh, specification format that um, we have developed in order to be um, a literate language that, that should intuitively make sense, uses you know common mathematical uh, words. And um, we have created it in such a way that, that from a small specification like this, we should be able to generate a, a suite of um, reachability claims. So, uh, 
proof publications essentially that you can port to uh, right now on the K, but there are more backends uh, that we're planning. Um, and so let me show you how this works. Um, we have on the left hand side we have the specification uh, in the Act language, and on the right hand side we have uh, a simple <coughs> function, uh, a simple transfer function. So what we do is, well, actually, let me go back and just say the main claim of the specification is in this storage um, header. So under the storage header, we're saying how the balances of the people involved are being updated. So we're saying that whatever their initial balances were from balance to above, they're going to be updated um, with a corresponding value as a um, uh, as a result of calling the transfer uh, function. Okay, but this doesn't always happen because uh, there are some scenarios where you do call the transfer function and your balances aren't updated, namely if uh, you don't have enough money to send or uh, if there is an overflow when you're trying to add the value to the receiver. And so this should be reflected in the spec. And, and here it is, we see that there are actually um, four conditions associated with this particular act. And the first three are associated with an if and only if header, or this IFF. Um, and that means that in the uh, two specs that are going to be generated, or the two reachability claims, or two proof obligations that are going to be generated from this um, uh, act, we are going to assume all of the uh, conditions in the if and only if header um, to be true in the pass case and to be false in the fail case. So what the nature of that claim is, is, is that it amounts to saying that only if in the case where we are still within the range of a UN256 bit uh, word, then these storage updates should be performed. And when any of these conditions are not met, then we should be in the fail case, and the fail case asserts that everything must revert. No storage updates are to be performed. Um, but there's another type of condition that we can make in an act, uh, and that's the if header. And, and the if header, the, the conditions in the if header are assumed in both the fail and the pass cases. So obviously this, um, restricts the nature of your claim and makes it slightly weaker uh, by assuming additional assumptions. And so if you have an if header like this, you must have a corresponding next spec that assumes the negation of that if header. Um, so in this particular spec, we're um, saying that the caller ID um, should be different from, from the two, meaning that the sender should be different from the receiver because we have to treat this uh, case uh, somewhat differently. Um, I mean. We, we actually then would only be referring to a single um, entry in the storage uh, rather than two separate ones. So uh, we need to write that spec a little bit differently. And so then during the course of this competition we'll be making, um, we, we have a suite of these specs that we'll go over um, soon enough. Um, and they will generate these proof obligations and your bytecode will be associated with that proof obligation and the proof will be run on our CI machine. Um, and after they have been run, if all of your um, specs are passing, if all of the proof obligations have been proven, then there we will be um, taking the execution traces. So the method by which we're proving things is through a symbolic execution and, and that gives you a complete exploration of the possible things that could happen uh, through the execution of this uh, method. And through this execution trace, we're able to walk down all of the branches and look at the final result in the gas, um, the final gas result, so the final gas consumed by this method in each branch. And when we do this gas extraction, we take the maximum um, values of the worst case scenario calling this function and this is going to be uh, your value that you're, that you're 
competing with. So we get a symbolic expression like this. If you know your EVM, um, then you know that um, whenever you do a storage update, uh, what actually determines the cost of that um, has to do with whether the storage that you're updating was zero or whether you're putting it to zero. And so we'll see conditions on this form when, when they are uh, the most general. But of course, you can take the, the worst case scenario of this, and this is what we'll be using. OK, so uh, with that, let me just say how this will all go down. Uh, as I said, all proofs will be running on our uh, service. You don't actually need to do uh, much yourself. Of course, if you're interested, you can come and chat to us and we can talk about it. Um, but for the purposes of this competition, the only thing that you need to do is to write an implementation, get the bytecode of that implementation, the runtime bytecode, and um, make a PR to a repo that we'll be showing you soon. Um, and everything that is provably correct will be analyzed for gas. Okay, so I think it's time to go over the specs. Um, they can be found at this uh, repo, which is the repo we'll be working with. It's uh, github.com slash dapplab slash erc20 dash golf. Um, and uh, there is, as I mentioned, there were some um, opinionated choices we made uh, while making the spec. Well, the first one, or the most important ones that are listed on this page, will not be caring about logs, so you can forget about logs for your implementation uh, for the purposes of this contest. Um, everything must revert if call value is uh, greater than zero, so this is following the convention of both Viper and Solidity. Um, and well, this is, this is actually true with a, with a minor caveat. The storage location, so if you know um, the way that the EVM um, deals with the storage under the hood is a simple uh, key value mapping of, of, of integers to integers. Um, and so in order to translate the, so the variables that are being used in uh, near 20 like balances and total supply and allowances, you need to place these at a particular location uh, of these um, of this integer to integer mapping in, in the UVM. Uh, and there's a convention for how you do this. Uh, and the most um, crucial thing to know here is how do you um, make sure that the, the, you need to encode basically the balances and the allowances mappings uh, in a particular way. Um, and this is a particular hashing scheme uh, that um, Solidity uses in order to make sure that whenever you look up the balance of a particular address, um, you won't have any collisions with uh, any other address in the balance of memory. Um, so we can go over those details uh, if people want to. But you can actually also use the Viper convention, which is extremely similar. It, it hashes the arguments in the same way, but only in a reverse order. Um, but if you're using Solidity or Viper to write your contracts, this will be, of course, not for you. Um, and as a final opinionated choice, um, if the allowance of a, uh, a particular person with respect to some uh, executor is uh, the max possible UNT, then transfer from should not decrease uh, the allowance of uh, the spender. Okay, and all the submissions are due at 12.25. Um, let's go over the specs. Would you like? Hey, sure, yeah. So I'll demo now the specs for you and also how the CI server works and uh, cover it in detail um, everything you need to know to Uh, 
So first, first I want to show you the structure of this uh, of this repo. Has everyone been able to find it? First of all, so we're looking for uh, we're looking for this repo on, on, on GitHub. So everyone hopefully has it. Uh, and I'm going to show you first um, uh, just the structure of this. Uh, so we've got um, we've got in here um, a readme, a configuration file that you don't need to worry about. Um, and uh, the most important stuff is in this source directory. Um, and here, uh, firstly, we have our specs, which is in spec.md. And this is the, these are the specs that Martin was, um, was referring to. Uh, this is written as a markdown file, and it's got these uh, specs that will be tangled, uh, tangled out of it. You do not need to edit this, because this is the part that's, um, that's, that's, hard, that's, hard, that's uh, given to you for, um, for targeting. Uh, but you do need to read these if you want to write implementations that will actually um, uh, that will actually pass to make sure that you understand all of the nuances. Hopefully not too many nuances, but there are some. Um, so, uh, I, Martin has already covered how these specs look, but I'll maybe just pick another one and quickly uh, go over any, any uh, other features. Um, but, the, you know, the, the idea is you want, to, you want to read these, and these interface lines correspond to the familiar ERC20 uh, interfaces. And uh, we use the, um, we use the Solidity, uh, uh, or you know, the Ethereum contract API for uh, computing, uh, you know, interface uh, selectors from the from the call data, um, which is, I guess, you know, assumed. But basically, what that means is that uh, if you're writing the, uh, you know, if you're writing the total supply function, um, that means that the, uh, the the first four bytes of the call data have to be the uh, the, sh the SHA three of this of this string. Uh, so it has to be something like this. Um, so just keep keep that in mind in case you were in case you were wondering how how to how to write this. Of course, if you're writing it in Solidity or Viper, then this is not um, you, this is done for you. Um, so I think hopefully these are these are these are pretty readable. And the best way to address any uh, any difficulties would be when we get to the practical part. If you raise your hand or uh, just say say something, and we can discuss uh, discuss the meaning of of, of, of these specs. That's not clear, um, but. I mean, you know, it's, I, I, I hope these are, these are pretty readable. So you can see, for example, the convention with the return uh, with the return values is here at this last line at the bottom means you return one when this thing is um, is, is successful. Um, so now I want to show you actually how to run how, how to run this with your own zero implementation. Um, so if you go back to this, uh, if you go back to the source directory, uh, you'll see some other files. Um, and the, the most important one for you to edit is this file bin runtime, uh, which contains the runtime uh, bytecode of your of your submission. And you'll see that there's already one in here, uh, which is um, uh, which is the sample one that's provided. This is coming from a basic kind of Solidity um, implementation. Uh, the source of which is available, or no, okay, where is it? Uh, it's in the it's in the repo in the main uh, directory. So we go up a little, yeah, this, that's okay. So um, this is like the par uh, that, that you can compare yourself against in, in the competition. And it, it also assists you if you find these specs hard to read, then you can simply read the Solidity and then uh, get a handle on what's going on. Yeah, so, so to be clear, this, this Solidity that's in the, in the uh, root of this uh, Git repo passes the specs, so your, your, your thing needs to be behaviorally equivalent uh, to this, so this is one way to um, to check, uh, and except for the constructor, which we will not be uh, verifying. You don't need to you don't you don't need to worry about how to how this contract is deployed. You only need to worry about how this transitions once it's deployed. Um, right. So going back to this, um, what you need to do is put your uh, put your bytecode into into this file. Uh, so you can you know you can delete this file and then uh, put your uh, your own bytecode uh, into it. Uh, and I think you're actually allowed to, because if you, you know, as you'll, as you'll see in the repo for this, in the, in the readme in this repo, um, here's how you do that with um, soul C. Uh, and uh, so you do it with soul C, with, um, you can also use soul C to output, um, to output Yule, uh, to, 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 uh, to consume Yule and output uh, EVM by code. Um, and uh, these are the instructions for, for Viper, and maybe you have your own uh, funny tools uh, that you want to try. Um, 
so it actually apparently it's allowed to have this header, but it's not necessary. So you know, just simply having the the hex in here as ASCII is um, is, is is fine. Uh, I don't know what what this is. How uh, how how CLC will output it. Uh, so now I will show you how this gets um, how this gets processed. Uh, and this is enough for, for the for the repo structure. Um, so what's going to happen when you uh, when you submit a pull request where you've edited this in runtime file is um, our our CI server will automatically pick up the uh, the pull request and it's going to run the K-Framework prover. Uh, using the specs generated um, from the from the act language uh, against your uh, against your event code, and um, then after that execution is done, um, you know, here's an example of where the CI is running. Uh, when this execution is done, uh, if you, know, you, you, you get a successful uh, proof, all of the all the specs, all the reachability claims were successfully proved, um, you will uh, uh, it will actually do a um, a symbolic analysis of the of the gas of all these execution traces, and it will calculate as Martin, as Martin said the, the maximum gas consumed. Uh, and then there will be a report produced. So here, if, once you want to, if, if you want to track your progress, you can go to dap.ci slash erc20 hyphen golf. Um, and here, for every um, for every pull request to this repo, there will be a um, a, uh, a hash, uh, which is your entry. Um, as you can see here, there you know, the last one was in 1042, and if you look, you know, if you look on the right-hand side, you'll see that there are 16 um, uh, aspects in total, and 16 of them were uh, were accepted, meaning that this is a correct implementation that's been formally verified. Uh, and now, if you click on this link, well, you'll be able to see a, a, an overview of how everything passed. But also, very importantly, um, you'll see next to every uh, next to every passing behavior, um, you'll see uh, here on the on the right, you'll see gas and gas analysis. So I want to show you these. Um, so gas is, is is a bit technical, but this is um, uh, the uh, the K term that we've extracted from the symbolic execution that represents the uh, the state of the gas at the end of at the end of every execution of this of this function. The reason it's a bit complicated is because there's going to be branching in here, and it's going to depend on the the, the state state of the call data. Um, but that's, that's a little bit hard to read, but the thing that the submission will look at, or that the context will look at, is this gas analysis. So if you click that link, um, you'll see that we have, uh, actually, can you guys see this? So basically what, what, this is, what this is showing is that this balance of, uh, that this balance of function is actually going to consume 530 uh, gas in every, in every case. So this is actually a very simple example. But now if we move on to something a little bit more uh, complicated, like, uh, like this transfer function, and we look at the gas analysis for that, um, it's a little bit more uh, it's a little bit more complicated. So here you can see the first thing is the tree, so that's actually the gas in all the cases, and you can see that it's conditional on the, 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 the starting balance and the ending balance. Um, and then we also compute the minimum and the maximum gas used, and your, your, your um, contest uh, entry is going to be the, um, uh, the maximum gas used. Uh, and we will completely ignore what happens in cases where uh, your behavior, where, where your execution is supposed to revert. So if someone is over, over underflowing, or they're not approved, or something like that, um, we don't care how much gas it used because you know, the user made an error, and we're not going to try to save any gas. So you can do whatever you want in those cases, provided you revert. Um, so I think this probably gives you everything you need to um, to get started. Uh, so we are we encourage you to get started as soon as possible because uh, it will take you know. You know, it'll, take, it'll take about 15 to 20 minutes for these uh, for these executions to run in the CI. We can run uh, a few in parallel, of course, but um, to increase the chances that your submission executes by um, by, the time, by the end of the workshop, please uh, please submit it as soon as possible and don't worry about getting the absolutely best um, implementation you you can because I think uh, simply getting something that uh, makes some improvements over the solidity will already give you a good shot. Um, and uh, the goal is to have fun and, uh, and, and learn something. And of course, you know, we can we can continue playing for the next couple of weeks uh, or months if you want to continue to uh, uh, to get it down. So just to, just to make this workflow completely clear, what you need to do, I'm going to just quickly make a submission to this thing uh, to, to to show you. So here I'm in the um, here I'm in the ERC20 Golf uh, repo, and let's say I want to make a I want to make an optimization to the bytecode. Um, and in particular, I'm going to use a tool. Um, I'm going to use a tool. It's very nice. Um, 
uh, called SED, which, uh, which stands for um, Solidity Enhanced Deployment. And uh, what's really nice about it is it actually comes with uh, most Unix systems, and, uh, and Solidity actually uses this to implement its compiler optimizations. In fact, most of the compilers implemented in this is the state-of-the-art way to, um, to work with, uh, with optimized bytecode. And I'm going to apply a trick. The syntax is a little bit arcane, but this is a really powerful tool. Um, so, for example, if you do a push, if you do a push zero in the EVM, what that does is it puts zero on the stack, and that costs you three gas. Um, but in this particular case, because we're we're in this uh, non-payable uh, regime where you're not supposed to send any value, and otherwise it's going to revert, we can actually we actually know that most of the time the uh, the, the the call value is going to be zero, but the call value opcode only costs two gas. So we can actually every time we need to push zero, which would be quite a few times because that's quite a useful number to have. Um, we can actually replace every occurrence of push zero with the call value opcode, which I'm going to look up here in my little cheat sheet is uh, is actually 34 in hex. So if we do this um, to the to, 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 to the bytecode, um, that should actually uh, implement this, uh, this this one of the pretty sophisticated compiler optimization. Um, so now you'll you'll see that uh, uh, we've actually you know we've actually changed the bytecode in some in some way. Uh, and uh, I can actually, um, I'm actually going to commit this and, um, uh, and make a pull request. Um, So now you just go up here. And now, of course, you know you, you'll, you'll make a pull request on your own uh, fork or, or whatever. Um, this go so once I once I cr click create pull request here, uh, it's going to get hopefully picked up by the CI straight away, and then we can start verifying and see how much gas we saved from implementing this. Uh, Solidity enhanced uh, deployment optimization. Great, it's already running. Uh, and if I go, if I go to this website, which again is dap.ci slash erc20 hyphen golf, which is a nice uh, dashboard for viewing these uh, these builds, you'll see that there's a new one. There's a new one at the top. You can see it says running 16. So none of them have been accepted yet. It's going to take a little while. Formal verification is uh, expensive and slow, uh, and then you'll but you'll see these you'll see these gas analyses coming in as these as these proofs happen in the next you know two minutes probably the first one will come in and they'll start coming in so you can see how you're doing and you know hopefully it'll take under, under around around 15 minutes to complete all of them and then uh, this will be the first uh, will be the first submission and I challenge you to see if you can if you can beat this one um, using. Uh, Using any tools of your choice, you know, even an easy way to place to start is to apply some of these manual kinds of bytecode optimizations. You can also try running Sol C with the optimized flag, uh, because the the, the 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 included submission was not compiled with that, so that should already give you some some pretty um, good savings. And then, of course, you know, writing it in uh, raw EDM or Yule or whatever whatever you like uh, will probably give you even more. Uh, so I think that's it, and I think it's good time good time to start um, start working. And uh, please. Um, since this is a workshop, the idea is you're supposed to ask questions, and we might help you understand um, the spec language or uh, or this this tooling. So please uh, please don't hesitate to uh, uh, to to engage with us and your neighbors. Are there any immediate questions? Yes. Is there a Uh, yeah, the, the dispatch and all that is included. Uh, none of the deployment is included, so you know um, the uh, length of the bytecode doesn't matter. But um, everything that happens from PC counter one until a return uh, is accounted for. Yeah, so exactly, like storage could be anything, um, but I mean the, the storage locations that you'll likely be uh, working with are 
the ones that come from the mapping of uh, balances and allowances. So, yeah. Uh, sorry, there's one really important thing that I missed, which is to do with storage thing. Thanks for bringing that up. So, I mean, one of the ways that in general you can try to optimize storage is by like packing packing things together to try to use that storage or something like that. Now, regardless of whether that would be a good idea for an ERC-20 token, that that isn't really compatible with our um, with our approach here because um, what we're formally verifying actually needs to specify exactly where the uh, where the storage lives. Firstly, and secondly, the semantics of your of your contract actually change if you start to reduce the uh, the size of the of the integers that you're using because you you'll start to overflow in situations where you otherwise wouldn't have. Um, so that that's not really going to work. And in particular, you actually need to look at one more file in this repo uh, potentially, depending on how. Um, how crazy your uh, your approach is, which is the storage.md. So this is the storage specification. Um, and if you're just using Solidity to Viper, then all you need to do is follow the the, the order of the of the storage layout that, um, that 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 we gave as an example, which is balances, total supply, and allowances. So as long as the variables are declared in that order, they'll be put in the right places. Um, but formally, what's actually going on, and if you're using a more low-level approach, then it's it's actually mapped out in this file. So, um, I mean, I, I hope that if, probably if you're going to do something like this, then you already know how Solidity places its, its, its variables. Otherwise, uh, it, it, it's, it's going to be a, 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 a few things to learn. Um, but you know, for, for, for simple for simple variables that are not things like uh, like like the total supply, um, they're just going into the slot number that corresponds to the you know, starting from zero, the the, the the order that the variable is declared. So, total supply, for example, it lives in slot one. So you know, if you want to if you want to store the total supply, you just do s store one and then the the, 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 the supply. Um, while um, while while mappings like balances and, and then two two D mappings like uh, like allowances are a bit more complicated. They're computed using hashes, and there's actually two different conventions, as Martin said. There's Solidity and Viper, and they hash things in the opposite order. Um, and uh, by default, this file is going to be configured to use a Solidity order. So this is why it says Solidity here. And if I wanted to use Viper instead. What I would do is I would um, I, I, you need to actually replace this with um, with Viper, and then we're going to hash things in the opposite order. Now, if, uh, uh, you know, if, if for the details of how to how it's actually hashed, I think the best thing would be that if you're interested in experimenting with this, is that you raise your hand and um, one of us will come uh, could come and show you to make sure that it's it's correct. Just because maybe most people aren't aren't interested in that, it's not worth spending five minutes explaining it right now. Um, Uh, allowance is like, yeah, I think the easiest way to remember is source destination, so, uh, so owner and spender is also correct. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, let's get started. And if you have a question, please please, please raise your hand or, or just say something. To replace uh, six zero 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 um, with uh, with thirty four, it actually uh, it, it actually corrupted something, and the formal verification just came back uh, negative. Very bad, very bad results. Um, don't try this one. Uh, you will be wasting uh, wasting your time. So uh, this is a, I would say this is a success for um, for formal verification. Maybe a uh, uh, a bad day for um, uh, uh, said. Did all of them fail, or uh, no? Just, actually, just just one. Well, the way we set it up is the first failure causes it all to all to stop, so not to waste time. So it looks like the transfer from function uh, failed. 
So nothing passed before that. Uh, nothing actually passed before that. It failed pretty quickly. Um, again, if, if, if that's your kind of if that's your cup of tea, you know, another thing interesting to investigate would be to figure out why this optimization is unsafe, maybe how to make it safe. Um, Yeah. 